Madam Chair, you are live. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this meeting of the Historic Districts Review Board. Uh, this meeting is now called to order. May we have a roll call, please? Madam Chair Rios? Here. Vice Chair Guida? Here. Ms. Aguilar Madrano? Member Benvenu? Here. Member Bishai? Here. Member Mather? Here. Member Baldo? Here. Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you very much. Are there any changes to the agenda? Heather or anyone else? Uh, yes, Chair Rios. On, on their new business, um, item D, uh, actually item E, 2024 HDRB, postponed. Also item F, 2024-008-010-723-0 Santa Fe Trail, that one is postponed as well. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as just amended? Rita moves to approve as amended. I'm glad Madrana seconds. Uh, roll call vote, please. Member Aguilar Madrano? Member Bishai? Yes. Member Guida? Yes. Member Benvenu? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Baldo? Yes. Motion has passed. We have minutes of March 26, 2024. Board members, changes to any of these? This set of minutes. Member Benvenu. Thank you, Madam Chair. On page 31 of the minutes, let's see, on the uh, second from the last paragraph, beginning member Bienvenu appreciated all the comments. Um, I'll see the fourth sentence. The general feeling is not to demolish the buildings, comma. He said he respected that opinion, add the words, but disagreed, period. Um, then take the next sentence. That's why he proposed that demolition be considered first and move it to follow the next sentence, which is another general concern expressed is the desire to have a collaborative process, then insert the previous sentence. That's why he proposed that demolition be considered first. That's all I have, thank you. Any other changes? If not, is there a motion to approve as just amended? Moved. Wait a seconds. Roll call vote, please. Member Valdo? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Benvenu? Yes. Member Guida? Yes. Member Aguilar Medrano? Yes. Member Bishai? Yes. Madam Chair, it's been approved. Right. We have uh, six findings of fact and conclusions of law, two under the date of February 27th, 2024. Changes to these. No one has changes. Is there a motion to approve? Each I moves to approve the findings of fact and conclusions of law for February 27th, 2024. In the seconds. Roll call vote, please. Madam Bishai? Yes. Member Aguilar Madrano? Member Guida? Yes. Member Benvenu? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Baldo? Yes. Madam Chair, your findings have been approved. Very much. Uh, we have four under March 26, 2024. Changes to any of these? It appears not. I will entertain a motion, please. HI moves mm -hmm. to approve the findings of fact and conclusions of law for March 26, 2024, items C through F on the agenda. A second the motion. We'll call vote, please, Amanda. Member Valdo? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Benu? Yes. Vice Chair Guida? Yes. Member Aguilar Madrano? Yes. Member Bishai? Yes. Madam Chair, those have been approved. Thank you very much. Any matters from the public? Anyone in this room not having to do with um, specific cases for this evening? I see one person coming down, Mr. Breyerera. Is that my con? I don't think it is. 
<clears throat> oh, there we go. Uh, this question is probably for staff, but uh, being that it had to do with the age board, I thought I'd ask the board. Uh, why was work uh, postponed on the house at 367 Hillside Avenue? They were working on a water line, and then all of a sudden the work was stopped, and apparently there was a notice from the age board on the reason for stop, but I didn't see the notice, so I, I, I didn't, couldn't tell. But I was wondering if someone knew the answer to that question. I do not have the answer, but it looks like Mr. Dudon does, and Heather probably does too. Yes, Chair Rios, I was going to refer it to Mr. Duran. Chair Rios, members of the board, um, Mr. Herrera, um, there was a, a water line service they were putting in there um, the owner of the property did not apply for a construction permit or for archaeological clearance. He exceeded the 60 linear feet in the historic downtown archaeological review district. So he needed to get archaeological clearance and a construction permit and a plumbing permit for the water service. Um, there was an archaeological site found in the area at that service where they were trenching. So given with the artifacts that were found and um the permitting process the homeowner and there was an applicant working for the homeowner they never filed for a construction permit or plumbing permit or archaeological clearance so right now all work has stopped so that's where they're at right now thank you thank you mr Adreda. anyone else anyone else on zoom Yes, Chair Rios, Stephanie Beninato would like to speak. Me, may I unmute? Uh, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. I, I wanted to bring up a couple of things. Um, I mentioned this uh, fence that came down at um, Don Gaspar and Buena Vista. It's on the southwest corner of Don Gaspar there. And I see now that there are posts that have been put in place. It looks like it's going to be a four and a half foot high, at least, fence, maybe four and three quarter feet. Um, it's really inappropriate in that district. There's really nothing else like that, that fence that high. Um, if there are fences, really, there's some across the street, but there's they're up the hill. So there's a retaining wall, then there's some fencing, but usually you still can completely see the house. And I'd really like to know what's going on with that and, you know, what kind of fence will really be built there. The other thing I'd like to bring to your attention, which I brought to your attention before, but nothing really happens. Um, 300 Galisteo Street, huge HVAC up there, totally visible from the street. You don't even have to try to look for it. It is sticking out like a sore thumb. The uh, hotel, motel, whatever you want to call it. Uh, where Garrett's Desert Inn used to be on Alameda and Old Santa Fe Trail. Um, that, too, has a huge HVAC system. That you can It's just so obvious. And I'm really kind of disappointed because I thought that Architectural Alliance was the architect on that project. And I'm sure Eric and, and whoever else is now running that firm knows better than not to um, shield those uh, mechanical equipment. And then the last place, which I think I saw some, and I apologize for not being more specific, but I was doing a tour over the weekend. Pretty sure I was looking at the Sequoia uh, over there on the north side of Paseo. Pretty sure you can see uh, also mechanical equipment sticking up on that roof as well. This really detracts from our downtown, and I don't really see any reason that it should be happening. And I am disappointed that... Um, the code enforcement doesn't see it themselves because it's really blatant and all you have to do is actually look as you're moving around the town. Thank you. I hope you will uh, direct your staff's attention to these matters. Thank you, Stephanie. And Stephanie, sorry, but per usual, um, I can hear some of what you're saying and then you fade away 
And so what I would suggest is perhaps that you could communicate with the city uh, via email. Okay, Sorry. I just want to say that when I uh, listened, I've listened to this a few times on YouTube, and I can actually hear myself quite well. It comes across like really well recorded. So I'm not sure why you're not hearing me. Um, thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, staff communications, Heather? Or whoever's going to speak in reference to the... Hey, Rios, members of the board, um, just wanted to bring you a notice of 2024 Santa Fe Heritage Preservation Awards will be coming up on May 9th. Um, we have some nominees, and I would like to read that for you. For Architectural Preservation Award, we have 853 East Palace, the grocery store. Also, 4010 Santa Fe Trail, that is the um, San Miguel Chapel. Okay, and then compatible remodel, we have um, 626 Canyon Road, that's a contributing building downtown and east side, 459 Camino Manzano, downtown east side, non-contributing, 104 Calle La Peña, downtown east side, non-contributing, 1404 Cerro Gordo, downtown east side, non-contributing, and 224 Maynard Street, west side Guadalupe, that's also non-contributing. And then we have compatible new construction, we have two, 1292 Lejano Lane, uh, non contributing downtown east side and 1023 east alameda downtown east side and the last one is um cultural Pres preservation award um that'll be the locomotive at salvador Perez, and then the olive rush memorial studio at 6 30 canyon road you will receive a packet on monday the 15th and you will be voting on this on the 23rd hearing thank you and also, um, you, the public, is invited to uh, the Preservation Awards. So uh, they're kind of very nice. So I invite all of you to come. And there's always a reception with a little bit of food afterwards. So join us. Yes, Member Aguilar-Medrana. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Amanda, I was waiting on nominating any projects until I heard back about that small list I sent over. Were you able to check if any of those were eligible? We, we did check your list and any of them we moved forward to nomination. Oh. So the list that uh, you and also a few other members, we, we checked them to see if they um, had their final inspections, if they had, didn't have any red tags and those of those nature. Oh, okay, and I I did have one that I knew was done, so I didn't include in that email. Do I still have time to send that to you guys or no? Yes, you may. If you can get it to me, maybe in like the next day or so. Oh, sure. I can okay. that. All right. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. Thank you, Member Anyone else in reference to the preservation award? No one. Uh, we don't have anything under old business, and we do have five cases under new business. I do need to inform you that if you disagree with the decision that this board renders this evening, you can appeal that to the city council. And that would be 15 days. You have up to 15 days after the findings and conclusions have been approved. Also this evening, Amanda, if you will help me regarding public comment, two minute limit. Thank you. And Izzy is going to be taking care of that from IT. Okay, thank, thank you. you. You'll hear a buzz, and that doesn't refer to the applicant that is speaking. Um, the first case this evening is located at 528 Jose Street. Is that applicant here? The applicants are here. And may we hear from you, Ramon? Good evening, Madam Chair and members of the board. This is case number 2024-007993-HDRB for status review and primary facades designations to inform future renovations.
528 Jose Street is located on the north side of the street, west of North Guadalupe and Paseo de Peralta. The status currently is non-contributing to the West Side Guadalupe Historic District. The property is outlined in red. To orient you, it's just west of like the Lauterberger and the um, laundromat <laughs> dry cleaners. The property contains two structures, shown here as A, the guest house, and B, currently a recording studio. According to the HICP, the guest house building A is, uh, was assumed to have started as a shed or possibly a dwelling as a one-story adobe structure with a pre-1966 appendage along its west elevation. The older section has a sloped roof draining east while the addition has mostly flat. Both of these are made primarily of adobe. Uh, I should have described this as the east elevation of building A. This is the north elevation of building A, with cameras facing west. Building A, the south elevation, camera facing east. It's hard to get a picture of it. It's right up against the property line. Building B is the recording studio. Um, it has been modified considerably over its history and has, in my opinion, little historical integrity. The East Elevation. Building B, the southeast corner, camera facing northwest. The um, north and west elevations uh, cannot really be photographed because they're right up against the property line and there was not a good point of view for those. Staff recommends that the historical status of the structures A and B be maintained as non-contributing per 14-5.2C designation of significant and contributing structures and 14-5.2i west side and guadalupe historic district uh give us the date of a building uh the smaller building building a uh it first shows up in aerials in 1966 adam chair <laughs> and uh, this building is made out of what? Adobe. Adobe. And um, how did you come to the conclusion that this was a shed? Uh, that it started out as a shed? Well, uh, this is what Madam Chair, members of the board, um, this was what was reported in John Murphy's Hickby. In my opinion, I think it was originally a dwelling to begin you, you believe it was a dwelling, but you still stick with your recommendation of non-contributing? Madam Chair and members of the board, yes, I do. I can I consider these, um, I consider both of these structures have little historic integrity and, um, and a lack of um, presence. Uh, board members, do you have any other questions? This one? No? Applicant or applicants, will you please come forward and get sworn in? Iho Dimitrov, I'm the agent for the owners. And you can move that mic up. I believe, yeah. Yeah. Uh, agent for the owners, uh, Kate, Tim, Schmoyer, and Kate Carswell. Whoever is going to be addressing the board 
Would you raise your right hand, please? You might as well, all three of you, just in case. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know if all three of you stated your name for the record, but before you, let's go ahead and get your name. I'm Kate Carswell, co-owner. Okay. I'm uh, Timothy Schmoyer, co-owner. Okay. I'm the assistant city attorney. Um, you have stated your name, uh, and would you give your addresses, please? Uh, both Tim and I are at 1608 Camino de Cruz Blanca. Okay. And Mr. Dimitrov? Hey, I'm at 227 East Palace Avenue. Okay. With your Let's hands. See. I'm sorry. Sweet C. Okay. Thank you. With your right hands raised, please. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to this item shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, and you do this under the penalties of perjury? I do. I do. I do. Madam Chair, they are sworn. Thank you very much. Attorney Rubelit. Okay. The applicant, what, what do you have to tell us? And do you agree or disagree with um, staff's recommendation? Um, thank you, Ramon, for uh, the presentation and, and for, the, for your recommendation. We agree with it. And I just wanted to read the, eval the final paragraph of the evaluation by John Murphy. Um, which essentially confirms what Ramon stated. It says, uh, while both buildings pre uh, predate 1966, as evidenced by aerial photograph, it says neither warrants a contributing status. Building A is a modest conglomeration of two adobe structures that may have been a dwelling. Its limited fenestration suggests windows have been removed it is not a good example of traditional con construction. Building B received the transformation, transformational renovation in the 90s, changing from a residence to a recording studio. There's nothing left of the former except potentially a few sliding windows. So uh, the historian's recommendation says the recommendation is to maintain the status is not contributing for both structures. Uh, board members? Any questions or comments at this time? No one? Uh, anyone from this audience wishing to comment on this particular case? It appears not. Anyone um, on Zoom? Comment? Uh, no. No one on Zoom? Nobody has their hand raised. Members of this board, I will entertain a motion. Come on, we're all present. Yes, my brogy loud Victoria. Thank you, Madam Chair. In case number 2024 007993 HDRB at 528 Jose Street, um, I move to approve the application as submitted, maintaining the non contributing status of both the main residence and the guest house. Wait a second. Roll call vote, please. Member Waldo? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Benvenu? Yes. Vice Chair Guida? Yes. Member Aguilar Majano? Yes. Member Bishai? Madam Chair has been approved. Thank you very much. Thank you, all three of you. Thank you very much. The next case is located at 711 Don Cubero. Is that applicant here? The applicants are here. Um, and that is Paul's case. Paul, may we hear from you? Madam Chair, members of the board, thank you for coming here this evening. This is in case um, number 20240079922 HDRB uh, 711 Don Cabrero Alley. Uh, 711 Don Cabrero Alley is a single re family, single family residence listed as non-contributing to the Don Gaspar Historic District. 
The structure was built in the early 1900s, consisting of two bedrooms and now comprising of 1,602 square feet. The architectural design of the structure is a modest vernacular style as seen by the original rectangular shape and footprint, adobe block construction material, recessed doors and windows, and flat roof with rounded parapets. The structure has evolved through time, which can be seen from the rooftop and southern facade. General maintenance and repair have changed the original doors and windows of the structure, and the addition of the sunroom has transformed the southern facade. The western facade still maintains the integrity of the original construction of the structure, excluding the two non-historic divided light windows. The structure still holds the value of a contributing structure to the Don Gaspar Historic District, even though renovations have occurred throughout time as seen by the structural design and fenestrations. Here is a photo of the north elevation as well as the east elevation. Today during the site visit, and and review of this structure um and and my general view of this the northern facade holds the greatest fenestrations and details of this structure the recessed windows the rounded parapets there has been some alterations on that northern facade where one window was changed into a doorway and i believe john uh, mr murphy presents a very great historical um um archival research he and he brings to light the history of this home and and showing that in the early 1900s this home was constructed quintessential santa fe vernacular style rectangular style home additions have occurred though through the process of the homes just as all homes in santa fe have you know um, they built this sunroom to the southern facade and this addition occurred in the 1980s, 1990s, impacting that southern, southern facade. However, the original floor footprint that is still encapsulated and it's still present and it's still, it's still there. And I think it needs preserving. And so John captures this in a 1912 Kings map. Um, prior to the 19 Kings map, there was an 1880s map, 1890s that, that didn't show the development, but between 1890 and 1912, this structure was developed. And that re rectangular shaped uh, floor, print, floor uh, footprint is still present today. In 1930, we can see the additions that we see um, relative today. It kind of makes a large L shape. Um, same in construction block material, Adobe block. And just expanding as a family grew as in the history of this family and the Mendoza family, as the history grew, the family grew and so forth, uh, the home did as well. Very common in, in downtown Santa Fe. Here we can see in the 1978 aerial photograph, uh, courtesy of Murphy, the floor plan in which we see today. Now with the addition in the 80s and 90s, there was a sunroom added to the southern facade um, but that addition doesn't impact the integrity of this home. And so this is my original um, facade diagram showing that the Western facade number eight as the primary facade. I would, I would suggest that uh, the board consider the Northern facade as well. And that would be number one. Here is the Western facade in which I'm recommending as contributing um, the two divided light windows, the recess, rolling parapets, and it's on on Don Cupero Alley on the roadway. Um, here is a northern facade. It's kind of a tight uh, tight area to get a, a a good photograph of the elongated uh, facade. However, you can see the deep recessed windows, the door jams, window jams. They're all the same original. Um, and this structure should be designated as contributing. Staff stands for questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for your report, Paul. So portions of this building are over a hundred years old, correct? Madam Rio, Madam Chair Rios, yes, ma'am. And um, on the field trip today, um, we noticed that the north facade has the most 
in my opinion, character defining features the most doors, the windows. Well, it has one door and it used to have two doors, correct? And one door, uh, one window was, uh, one door was made into a window. Jerios, that's correct. But I don't think the dimension changed in terms of the width or the height. Is that correct? Jerios, that is correct. Um, and it's it's really a very sweet building. It's not a big building, but it's very well kept and very very nice. When we entered into the yard, um, you just tell that the family is is proud of their building and well kept. Uh, any other questions or comments at this time for Paul? Yes, Never Guida. Thank you, Madam Chair. Paul, um, what's uh, architectural historian John Murphy's recommendation for the status of this property? Chair Rios, Member Guida, um, Mr. Murphy recommends not contributing for this structure. Why? He recommends not contributing due to some of the additions that have occurred throughout time. Um, and um, he notes that the north elevation, you know, would be the one that was the front of the house. He notes that the door is lost, therefore it no longer communicates its tenement or or um, or duplex status anymore. And he notes that there are there's a change in the footprint from the King's Map um, to the present time. Um, I'm curious as to why you would even recommend the west facade, given that only a portion of it is that 1900s footprint. Chair Rios, member Guida, great question. So my initial um, intent for this structure after reviewing it, reading John Murphy's report, and I think John Murphy did a great job on his report. His history is great. So reading that, I, I was moving forward the North facade as primary. And after staff discussed the project, I moved to the Western facade. Given that John Murphy states in his uh, HCPI form, the Western facade had the least amount of impact from any. So it's the oldest part of the structure. Except that half of it is an addition. In the 1930s. So we're looking at from 19, pre-1912s to the 1930s, then we have a well-established structure, which is 96 years old, 94 um, years old. So, I mean, so yes, there, there is that Western facade, given that John Murphy stated that, and with the removal of the door to the window, I staff moved to the Western facade. And, and really, I believe that it should be the North. Northern facade holds the most fenestrations and and the western facade. Um, so which which is it, the north or the it, west? Your I, I made my recommendation as a west, as primary, but I would ask the board to consider the north as well. And what does this building contribute to the historic district? To the Don Gaspar Historic District, I believe it contributes to the development of that time of that landscape, given that, and you can see the rectangular shape of this structure and as it grew throughout time. So we have, we have this, you can see that Eastern facade, right? And that's been there for over a hundred years. We know that. That Northern facade has been there relatively intact for over a hundred years. And as it grew, we can see that growth. At the site visit, it was plain as day. You could see the growth of this home taking place from pre-1912s to the 1930s, and then into the 1980s and 1990s and so forth. And, and that's a very, this quintessential Santa Fe vernacular style and the roof, the roof architect, like as we see the roof, the growth of the family, because the Mendoza family grew. They grew up during the, after the post-war, this family was growing and you can just see that growth throughout time. And, and that's just what, Santa Fe homes in this area did. And I think the construction material, fenestration, it, it gives that time and place for that Don, 
Don Cabrero Alley. So that's why my recommendation is contributing. I understand the concept of what, what you're trying to get across that, you know, that, that we can recognize buildings that have evolved over time. Um, we do have to recognize that buildings that, um, or we do have to kind of think through why a building would be contributing to the significant, to the um, historic district that's been defined. Um, we unfortunately don't have statements of historic dis of period of significance or statements of significance for our historic districts written in the code, but they do exist. John Murphy has written them. He refers to them in his reports. Um, the um, the issue of the integrity of the building is is its ability to communicate its historic significance or its contribution to the historic context. Um, and you know, I think an argument could be made for the north facade. Um, we know that a door has been removed. Are the are the doors and windows original? The window, uh, Cherios member Guida, the door jams are original. Okay. And the, it, but but the doors, windows are not historic materials. We have historic openings. I would say that those windows and doors are historic. Okay, but you pointed out that the west facade, those windows are not historic. That is. Um, you would have, you excluded member, those from your suggestion of nomination. Cherios member Guida, that is correct. These divided light windows are relatively new to the to the this facade. However, the the window jams are the original. And, right, and half of this facade, nineteen hundreds half, the right half is nineteen twenties thirties. Cherios member Guida, that is correct. Um, thank you for clarifying. Any other questions or comments? Thank you, Madam Chair. So, um, yeah, thank you uh, for your presentation. And I, based on the site visit and the materials, um, I, I do agree with your view that the building is contributing and that the north facade would be the most appropriately designated. It certainly... Um, it, uh, there are only two issues I think that would be of concern there. One is the door being uh, converted to a window, but essentially the the opening still remains, okay. and that was done in in an historic time period itself. So I don't I don't see that as being a problem. The only other issue that's been brought up with respect to the north facade is the coyote fence, uh, but I wouldn't consider a coyote fence. And do you know when that was built? It looks relatively recent. Jerry Rios, member B and Venu, I do not. I believe that's early 2000s. Right, because the photographs that we saw in the packet did not, did not include the coyote fence, which now does obscure quite a bit of that facade. Um, but at any rate, I would not tend to think that a fence should um, be the deciding factor in whether or not a facade is contributing or primary or not, just based on the fact that it can be changed or removed. Um, I also noted that in the packet, there was an earlier uh, undated historic building inventory form that, that, that considered this building to be contributing. Chair Rios, member B and Venu, that is correct. It was the 1983 HCPI form, but that form, um, why that wasn't, the 1983, why that this structure wasn't designated as contributing is unknown. Okay, but you're certain, though, that it is a non-contributing structure as of now? Chirios, member of BM Venu, that is correct. Um, and if the primary facade were the north facade, is there anything that would be excluded? Um, it seems to be not, and you're, I'm asking for your opinion, it would seem to be not because of the fact that everything on that facade, even the alterations are now historic, but what's your opinion? Chair Rios, member B and Venu, I would recommend that any non-historic materials be excluded, such as the lights, um, any of the windows that are non-historic, the doors that are non-historic, they be excluded. And do you know which ones of those windows or doors are non-historic? Terrios, member B and Venu, I believe they are all historic. That's what I thought. Okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.
Any other board members have comments or questions? Member Bichai. Um, thank you, Madam Chair. I just, I just, I mean, John just alluded to this, but um, I think it's interesting to note that the HICPA report um calls out the fence that's obscuring this north facade and uh, just related to other cases and discussions we've had about the impermanence of a fence, but um, it does seem to play a factor in the assessment of of um, how a property contributes to the streetscape. I think the HICP says that um, prior to the fence, um, this house related to a, um, a related house across the street. Um, and I would think that, that that would really define its contribution to the streetscape. This fence really does interfere with its ability. I, I mean, it must be at least five, maybe six feet tall, um, the ability to see what, what we is behind there that does contribute is lost significantly um, due to the fence. Just a comment. Thank you. Anything else? Uh, if nothing else, will the applicant or applicants please come forward and get sworn in? Um, Bridget Stanga, 711 Don Cubero Alley. Land and Lot, 7-Eleven, Donkey Barrow Alley. City Attorney will swear, swear you in. Please raise your right hands. Uh, do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you will give in reference to this item shall be the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalty of perjury? I do. I do. Madam Chair, the applicants are sworn. Thank you. Um, who's ever going to speak? Tell us what you want to tell us about this property. Madam Chair, thank you all for having us. Um, My wife and I, in June of 2021, bought this home. Uh, we were currently living in New Orleans and kind of fell in love with Santa Fe, so we moved here. Uh, the property at the time was, I wouldn't say dilapidated, but was not in the current shape that it's in now. Uh, my wife and I both really, really enjoy this house. We both really love this house. Um, however, the house currently does not have enough room for us to grow as a family, which is the intention. Um, this entire process right now is because moving beyond this, we'd like to convert the greenhouse sunroom. Um, yes. That's all I have to say. Mm -hmm. I think I know what what he told you that we are we are simply uh, looking at the historic status, and I'm going to guess that you disagree or you agree. Um, I do disagree. Um, I hired John Murphy to do some research on the house and spoke with him extensively, just because I'm a big admirer of his work. I think he crafts a very good story, which I think he crafts such a good story it makes this seem like a contributing house. However, knowing the limited information that I do about the process of whether it's contributing or not, I do agree with them because I feel like the sunroom of the house kind of completely takes away from the look of the house. Um, changes were made to the front of the house um, but I do disagree. Thank you. Um, board members, do you have any questions for the applicants? No question. Yes, Member Benvenu. Thank you, Madam Chair. No, not really questions, just uh, just comments. First of all, that you, you've done a beautiful job with the house. It's very obvious that you have a great deal of care for it. It's, it's just a lovely property in every way. I can see why you fell in love with it. I'm sure you're going to take good care of it in the future, whatever you plan to do. And of course, we always love to see people inhabiting these houses and growing uh, and letting the house grow with them. So just be assured that no matter what happens tonight, that would never be the intent of the board or the city to to interfere with that um, in any way that's not ex completely required by the code. And the code doesn't really require um, that houses, even when they're historically status, be left alone. Um, there are all sorts of opportunities for making renovations and changes. Um, uh, 
even a contributing or even a significant house can have changes made either because the code entirely permits it or because exceptions can be granted. So I'm, I'm not anticipating what the outcome will be tonight, but I just want to make sure you know that, that uh, whatever happens, you will be able to come before us again and, and um, hopefully be able to achieve the kind of renovations that you would like to see. Thank you for your comments, Member Benvenu. Anyone else? Uh, if not, anyone in this audience wishing to comment on this particular project? Here's not. Anyone on Zoom? Yes, Chair Rio. Stephanie Beninato. You may unmute. And she does need to get sworn in. Beninato? Yes, I'm unmuted. Okay, would you uh, state your name and give us your address, please? Stephanie Beninato, P.O. Box 1601, Santa Fe, New Mexico, 87504. Okay, if you would raise your right hand, you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to this item shall be the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalty of perjury. Yes. Madam Chair, Ms. Beninato is sworn. Um. I would like to see uh, this uh, designated as contributing with the north facade uh, being primary. I know there's a fence there now, but it did really contribute to the alley if the fence is ever removed and perhaps like a stone wall that is more in keeping in that area put in in some future date then the house again would be revealed. And again, I don't think the fencing itself should uh, determine whether it's contributing and, um, and, and which is the primary facade. I like the idea of the west facade, however, in that um, you have both the earlier building, the early 1900s and the 1930 building, both of which are historic and contribute to the um, massing and the footprint and are important in that way. So um, to me, either would work, um, but I do think one or the other, or as um, suggested by staff, both perhaps uh, should be allowed. Uh, and I would say that, you know, addition or changing of a greenhouse would probably um, <laughs> especially one that was so far from a primary facade would be fine. So thank you very much. Thank you, Stephanie. Anyone else on Zoom? Yes, I, I will entertain a motion at this time. Member Guida. Thank you, Madam Chair. In case 2024-007-992-HDRB-711, Don Cubero Alley, move that the board... Um, uh, upgrade the status of the structure to contributing and I, and designate the north facade as primary, excluding the non-historic light fixtures. Do you have a second? Neither seconds. Roll call vote, please. For B. Scheid? Yes. Member Argelay Medrano? Yes. Vice Chair Guida? Yes. Member Benvenu? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Valdo? Yes. Madam Chair, the motion has been approved. Thank you both. Next case is located at 1596 Canyon Road. Okay. I see that the applicant is present. And this is Lanny's case, but I guess Gary Lanny is absent, and Gary will be giving her report. Gary, you have the floor. Rio's members of the board, um, as you stated, that Lanny's on emergency leave, so I will be doing a presentation for her. Okay, case number 2023-006490 HDRB for 1596 Canyon Road, new construction of vacant lot. 1596 is on the south side of the road just west where Cerro Gordo meets Canyon Road. There is no street frontage and the property is accessed by private drive. Can you speak right into that mic so we can really hear you? Thank you. 1596 Canyon Road 
is a 1.764 acre vacant lot in the historic review district lot 1B1 in this plot image. The applicant proposed to construct a main residence consisting of one, a 3,900 square foot ranch style detached single family residence with an attached 585 square foot garage to a height of 14 feet, 14 feet, 10 inches, where the maximum allowable height is 14, 10, 14 feet, 10 inches. The roof will be pitch with gray, with graphite gray double standing seam roofing. An exception to the constructive pitch roof where one is not allowed is requested section SFCC 14.5.2 D9D. A 204 square foot entry portal on the northwest side of the residence. The portal will be constructed of, of a six inch by six inch metal cross columns with four inch by four inch T beams with matte gray to match roofing material. The graphite double gray standing seam. A portal of 887 square foot on the southeast of the residence. The portal will be constructed of six by six inch metal cross beams with four by four inch T beams in the same color as a roof. A 667 square foot open roof pergola on the northeast side of the residence will be built uh, six by six inch metal cross beams, four by four T beams, and two by four inch steel tubes in the same color gravel gray. gray. Windows and doors will be fixed in awning aluminum windows and doors as manufactured in. Prismatic Potter PSB A165 mat gravel gray to match the roofing. The windows and doors will be single light windows. The historic review district states that the following, in order to emulate traditional Santa Fe architectural and construction tradition, it is intended that the structure be designed to appear essentially as structures with the massive walls, which are defined as being built or appearing to be built of adobe construction. Wall thickness appearing massive in relation to the wall height and where the apical the depth of the windows, doors and entry, opening showing the massiveness of the structure. Windows and doors do not appear to be inset to comply with this standard. Garage door will be aluminum folding windows to match the roofing. The house will have 10 skylights in the same color as the roofing. As the roof are pitch, pitch roofs, the applicant is proposing a low prow, profile skylight to be flush with the roofing material. Exterior lighting on the residence will be a 6 inch by 12 inch LED aluminum cylind cylinder down light, same color as the roofing. Stucco color will be will include cementitious La Habra La Luce and buckskin and will be applied on alternating walls. A freestanding 468 square foot studio to a height of 1410, where the maximum allowable height is 1410. The studio roof will be pitch and gray graphite, double standing seam roofing. An aluminum sectional garage door with operable windows and frosted glass will be the same metal gravel gray in color on the north elevation. Studio will have four skylights in prismatic powder, matte gravel gray to match the roofing. Exterior lighting in the studio will be six inch by 12 LED aluminum cylinder down lights. Local color will include cementitious La Habra La Luce and buckskin and will be applied on alternating windows, walls. A 1,480 square foot ranch style guest house with 550 square foot detached garage to a height of 13 feet 10 inches, where the maximum allowable height is 13 feet 10 inches. 
the guest the guest house roof will be pitched with graphite gray double standing seam roofing. The 739 square foot portal will be on the southeast side of the guest house. Guest house will have four skylights, um, four skylight with powder PSB A165 matte gravel gray to match the roof. Exterior lighting at the guest house will be six by 10 inch inch LED element cylinder down lights. Local color will include um, La Luce and Buckskin applied on alternating walls. On the site, there will be three swimming pools, two at the main residence and one at the guest house of concrete and towel automatic retractable covers and pool arms, a six inch wide rectangular metal water spout and pool filters in the satin black on the southeast and marine grade stainless steel outdoor showers with foot washers. The ground mounted solar array will be located to the southeast of the main residence and a second ground mounted solar array will be to the southeast of the guest house. Other features will include an exterior stone fireplace, planters, water features, which will include circulating water features, rainwater catchment system, cup and chain style rain chains in place of downspouts in dark browns or black, depending on manufacturer. The property perimeter will have a six foot high coyote fence and a four feet by 16 feet metal entry vehicle gate at the driveway for the guest house. A four feet by 20 feet vehicle gate will cross the access easement for access to the main residence. A six foot deer fence with access gate will surround the garden between the main residence and the guest house. The driveway patio and walkway surface will be Santa Fe Brown, three quarter inch by seven eighth inch gravel and French grape pavers. Slope, cut, slope cuts have been preliminarily reviewed by the terrain management team. All structures will be set back from the Aceca de Alano per a condition set by the archeological review committee and the terrain management team. Staff does not find that the exception criteria have been met, but the board may find that they have upon further testimony. Otherwise, staff finds that most of the design meets the district standards and recommends approval of the application as it complies with 14-5.2D, General Design Standards for All Historic Districts, and Section 14-5.2F, Historic Review, Historic District Design Standards. Now for questions. Thank you, Gary. Heather? Just one quick thing, as, as you noticed, with reference, to Rios, with reference to Gary's presentation, it is in the Historic Review, Historic District. There's only a small portion of the lot that's in the downtown and east side. So typically, if it's over 50%, we consider it as part of, of a district. And so since this lot has more than 50% of the, of the site within the Historic Review, Historic District, then um, that's how we came to that judgment. Thank you. I was going to actually point out that it is in the Historic Review District. And... Um, Gary, you described this, uh, the proposed house, the main house is a ranch style. Is that um, something that is an accepted style within our historic, uh, within the ordinance? Arios, members of the board, um, as Lanny stated that it does not meet the um, Adobe style that is um, part of the historic review district. Thank you. Um, yes, Member Guido. Madam Chair, may I, may I ask that we also review 1600 Canyon Road since that is the adjacent property, same set of issues, and, and hear both of those case reports and comments together? Um, we can do that if uh, 
it's on the same property and then uh, I would ask for two separate motions. Okay, the next case is uh, 2023 006565 HDBR for 1600 Canyon Road, new construction on a vacant lot. 1600 Canyon Road is on the south side of the road just west where Cerro meets Canyon Road. There is no street frontage and the property is accessed by a private drive. 1600 Canyon Road is a 1.095 acre vacant lot in the Historic View District. The applicant proposed to construct. The residence will be a 3,200 square foot ranch style single family with 550 square foot attached garage to the maximum allowable height of 1410. The roof will be pitched with graphite double gray standing seam roofing. An exception to construct a pitch roof where one is not allowed is requested under SFCC 14 5.2 D9D. The Historic Review District states the following. In order to emulate traditional Santa Fe architectural and construction traditions, it is indeed that intended that the structure be de designed and appear essentially a structure with massive walls, which are defined as being built or appearing to be built of adobe construction, wall thickness appearing massive in relation to wall height and were applicable, the depth of windows, doors, and entry openings showing the massive of the structures. Windows and doors do not appear to be inset to comply with this standard. The 98 square foot entry portal will be located on the southeast side of the residence. A 650-square-foot portal will be located on the southwest side of the residence. A 460-square-foot open roof pergola built of 6 by 6 inch metal cross beams with 4 by 4 inch T-beams and 2 by 4 steel tubes in matte gravel gray match the standing seam roofing. The pergola will not be publicly visible. Windows and doors will be fixed and on in them, aluminum windows and doors as manufactured. I'll already match this, the roof as well. The windows and the windows and doors will be single light windows. For the garage doors will be aluminum folding doors in the same color to match the roofing. The house will have eight skylights in the same color as the roofing. As roofs are pitched roofs, the applicant is proposing a low-profile skylights to be flush with the roofing material. Exterior lighting on the residence will be 6 by 12 inch LED aluminum cylinder down lights. Local color will include cementitious La Habra La Luz and buckskin and will be applied will be applied alternating windows and walls. A 520 square foot studio to the maximum level height of 14 feet 10 inches. The roof will be pitched with graphite gray standing seam roofing. The aluminum sectional garage door will be with operable windows with frosted glass, same color to match the roofing. The studio will have four skylights, same color to match the roofing. Exterior lighting will be six by 12 inch LED aluminum cylinder down lights. Local color will include La Luz and Buckskin and will be applied on alternating walls. On the site, there will be a swimming pool of concrete tile with Hydroxyl base advanced oxidation process, automatic retractable covers and pool alarms in six inch wide rectangular metal 
water spout and pool fillers. In sand and black on the southeast and marine grade stainless steel outdoor showers with foot wash. The ground mounted solar array will be located in the southeast of the main residence. Other features will include an exterior stone fireplace, planters, water features, which will include recirculating water fixtures, rainwater catchment systems, a cup or chain style rain chains in place of downspouts, dark browns and black, depending on manufacturer. The property perimeter will have a six foot high coyote fence with a four by six feet metal entry vehicle gate at the driveway for the guest house. A four feet by 20 feet vehicle gate will cross the access easement for access to the main residence. The driveway patio and walkway surface will be Santa Fe Brown, three quarter inch by seven eighth inch gravel and French gray pavers. Slope cuts have been preliminary, preliminary reviewed by the terrain management team. All structures will be set back from the Acequia de Lano per the conditions set by the Archaeological Review Committee and the Terrain Management Team. Staff does not find that the exception criteria, criteria have been met, but the board may find that they have upon further testimony. Otherwise, staff finds that most of the design meets the district standards and recommends approval of the application as it complies with 14-5.2D general design standards of all historic district and section 14-5.2F historic review district design standards. Time for questions. Thank you, Gary. Um, so we are looking at two main houses and at um, 1596, we're also looking at a studio and a guest house. Uh, on 1596, there will be a garage that will be attached to the main house, and the guest house will have a garage that is not attached, correct? I do believe, yes. And uh, the applicant is also proposing a total of, am I understanding this correctly? four swimming pools, three at the um, 1596 project and uh, one at the 1600? Uh, Madam Chair, that is correct. Thank you. Um, other questions or comments at this time, Member Guida? Thank you. Just a, a question for Gary. To be clear, this is, we're saying this is the review district, right? Chair Rios, um, member, um, it will remember, yes, that is correct. So in the review district, as I read the code, and, you know, the question of style was brought up earlier. There is no mandate for an architectural style to be followed in the review district. Um, there are conditions put on the design of a building to be wall dominated um, and to, you know, have more wall than window and all of that. Um, but there's no requirement for Santa Fe style or recent Santa Fe style or things like that. That's that's part of the downtown and east side historic district. A another point of clarification, the review district also indicates that uh, while um, generally not allowed, gabled shed and hip to roofs are only allowed if sufficient evidence is provided to uh, by the applicant showing that there are pitched roofs before December 12th, 1983 in the, in the relevant streetscape. Um, that's not the code section that's that's in these reports and the foundation of the exception request of, of the applicant. Am I misreading that? Here is member Guida, with reference to the pitched roof, there's, there's actually two code sections. Okay. That first one would be the historic review district standards and then the second code section has to do with height. And so both of those will apply in this case and, and the height code section is what is being referred to. And that section states that there may be no, there may be no pitched roofs in the streetscape unless more than 50%, I believe, uh, pitched roofs exist in the streetscape. And those would be those pitched roofs in existence before 1980. 
Okay. So we're dealing with two things here, the general design standards, which don't allow pitched roofs, period, in any historic district, in any... The um, Chair Rios, Member Guida, it's, it's the historic review district. Yeah. And, um, you know, as, as you read, there is an opportunity for that. And then the height standards relative to the regulation of height for all structures, um, including the northern portion of the historic review historic district. So there's a special provision for that northern portion that it be compatible with the overall heights in the downtown. I, I guess, Heather, I'm, I'm looking for the place where we need an exception to request a pitch where a pitch is not allowed. That's what I'm not finding. Yeah, Rios, let me look at the code to see what specific code criterion that is. Okay. Uh, but I, and I will get back to you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments, Member Benvenu? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, this is very, this is confusing, obviously, because of this uh, strange uh, interaction between the two districts in this particular case, which I'm even more um, intrigued by now that you've said that part of the property actually is in the historic, I mean, the uh, downtown and east side district. Is that, is that right? Chair Barrios, Member Guida, the district is, I'm sorry, Member Bienvenue, it is partially within the downtown east side historic district and partially without. Oh. And I can share my screen and show you. I would love to see that. And for both properties, 1596 and 1600. Madam, and Chair. Madam Chair and Member Guida, uh, the um, section of the code that is referenced in the staff report which is 14-5.2, capital D, 9, lowercase d, for which an exception to sought is with respect to pitch. If the determined streetscape includes over 50% buildings with pitched roofs, the proposed building may have a pitched roof. A pitched roof is defined as a gable shed or hipped roof. Pitch of the roof shall match the predominant pitch extant in the streetscape. And that is in the general design standards that apply to all historic districts. Okay. Well, it also applies. I'm sorry. Did you want to say? I was going to say it also applies in this particular case because of the fact that the um, historic district, uh, when accessed by Canyon Road, is specifically brought in. Historic review district, when accessed by Canyon Road, is specifically brought within the the height requirements of the ordinance. Correct. Going to get to that when when we're discussing all the complications of how these two districts interact with each other in the ordinance. So I think that the ordinance seems to carve out um, properties that are accessed from Canyon Road for different treatment when they're in the historic review district. Is that fair to say? Do you agree? I believe it does, but let me see if I can find that. I haven't seen that in a while, but I, I do recall something. Also, so, Heather, um, when you let us know if uh, what portion of the property or properties is in the uh, downtown east side, would you indicate if it's both addresses or part of a one address? And just indicate clearly what what we're looking at. Chair Rios, um, I have shared my screen. Izzy just brought it up. Thank you, Izzy. And so this is our GIS system. And you can see, let me sort of zoom in. I just don't want to lose the context if I zoom in too much. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. So here's 1596 Canyon Road, 1600 Canyon Road. So as you can see, the 1600 lot is all within the Historic Review Historic District. The yellow color here is the downtown east side historic district. So the abutting properties to the north um, uh, 1594 and 1606 are both primarily in the downtown and east side historic district for 1606 and then almost all 1594. So with reference to the um, 1596, you can see that there is a portion of the property that is located in the downtown east side historic district. And then the rest of the property is within the historic review historic district. 
let me do something really quick and um, show you the aerial as well. So you can have the, the context and understand generally what um, area of the lot is within. So if unfortunately the lines won't stay up, we're actually I can do one. I'm sorry, make it very light. I will just do it on the on the run is a little hard, but you can see um, this is 1596. This is 1600 Canyon Road. And uh, so the front portion, that sort of very front portion of the lot is located in the um, uh, downtown and east side historic district. And this rear portion is not. The reason that we were talking about escarpment and the like is that there's a sudden rise in the property um, that goes towards the south. And then you can see the Asakia very faintly along the southern edge of that buildable area. So I'm going to turn on the, um, once again, the layers illustrating the districts. Just one thing. Um, so what structures are within the downtown and east side district then that are being proposed? I'm up the guest house apparently, right? On 1596. Carrios member being venue, that is correct. Generally we do it by parcel though. And so if a parcel it, because this is not exact in our GIS system, uh if a majority of the parcel is in that particular district, we do the entire parcel as that particular district. Okay. Madam Chair, I, I believe I found a section that Member Bienvenu was referring to, uh, which is found at 14-5.2 uh, D9 little a little one capital A. The authority to limit the height of any structures provided in this section shall apply within the downtown and east side Don Gaspar historic transition and west side Guadalupe historic districts. B, it shall also apply in the historic review district as specified herein. The authority shall apply to the northern and eastern portion of the re uh, historic review district as illustrated on the referenced map attached to here too and located in the city's planning and land use department. Inclusive under this authority are all properties accessed from Canyon Road and about nine or 10 other streets. Um, as they continue out of the downtown and east side historic district and terminate in the historic review district. Uh, I mean, it makes perfect sense that that would be there, right? Because this is so clearly not the review district, regardless of what the map says. This is so clearly Upper Canyon Road, the very heart of that district. And, it, and these properties all relate to the adjacent properties there, not to the quite distant properties that um, are what we located in what we normally think of as the review district. I'll have some other comments, but go ahead. And just to kind of finish up these two points that are in discussion, if I may. Madam Chair, I'm sorry. Uh, um, so that 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 section, um, Frank, that you just read um, applies to height. Um, and, you know, it's understood why that would be the case. Um, Question: Does this staff report for these two properties? Does the staff report for these two properties account for that particular limitation right now? And then two, um, I still don't understand the the kind of reason for the exception, or at least the basis for the exception for pitch. You know, I, I see in the general design standards that you know there is that fifty percent in the streetscape rule. We may do it's it's an allow you know we we forbid it unless this other condition is met. I didn't hear any discussion in the staff report of whether the applicant or staff have have evaluated that fifty percent rule. Are we saying that those pitch roofs just blanket do not exist in any streetscape and therefore an exception to this has to be and that's why a pitch is not allowed. The reasoning behind that? No, I, I think it acknowledges that there are pitch roofs in a number of streetscapes. The, the way it reads is if the determined streetscape includes over 50% buildings with pitched roofs. I understand, I understand the code. I, I, what the code says, I, I'm asking in the, in the case of these projects, 
Um, are we saying that an exception is re is required because there aren't 50%? That's my understanding. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. There is a way that that is measured, correct? In terms of there's different ways that are um, are measured to indicate uh, what you are reviewing in terms of the pitch roofs. Cheerios. Uh, yes, it is, and it is. Um, since it doesn't have a, a street frontage, it'll be measured three hundred feet in all directions. Okay, Heather. Thank you, Gary. Um, so am I understanding you correctly that the property on located at 1596 Canyon Road, we are reviewing that as though it is uh, all the buildings that are being proposed this evening are downtown east side. No, it's historic review, historic districts. Okay. But I thought you said a portion of that is nothing from the downtown east side is going to apply to these properties? Chair Rios, that is correct. Because if you can see for 1596 Canyon Road, sorry, the text is so small, but um, only a portion, that northern portion of the lot is um, in the downtown east side historic district. I wish this was more specific and to be fair, what we do is typically if something is greater than 50% in a particular district, then we then it'll be in that district. Um, just because this line is not tied to a property line, for instance. Okay, but even though these um, proposed homes are in the review district, do they not have to still be compatible to uh, it's their surroundings. Chair Rio said is correct. Thank you. Any other questions, board members? None at this time. Uh, applicant or applicants, please come forward and get sworn in. Chair, would you state your name and give us your address, please? My address is 1317B, Cerro Gordo Road, Santa Fe, 8758. Thank you. Mr. McDowell, do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to this item shall be the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalty of perjury? Madam Chair, the applicant is sworn. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. McDowell. You have the floor. What do you want to tell us? Well, a lot of answers. I think I'd first like to address the word ranch house. And I think that so many of these words these days we use to, so many of these words these days we use to address archeological, architectural style to get misread real quick. Maybe ranch house has to do with cowboys and all kinds of things. I hear a lot of people over the years talk about Betty Stewart, Southern Texas ranch style homes, which everybody loved and very beautiful, a lot of detail. Um, Ranch house in general, from my understanding, is long, L-shaped, open to the, the sides and what have you style. So in looking at this house and working with the owners and the city over a little over two years now on this project and three or four postponed HDRB meetings um, to try and determine what were the codes in this area and what was going to be allowed and not allowed. Um, I think it's important to really look at this pitched roof question because I think most people, when they think of pitched roof, think of high pitched roofs with uh, a lot of white detailing, a lot of fenestration and different things that would be looked at in the territorial style of the quote unquote traditional pitched roof. This house was designed more along a home that Beverly Spears designed in Galisteo. It was called the Marin House. Very low profile roof, very low pro profile windows, and trying to keep all the detailing consistent so that the house didn't really yell at you, so to speak. It didn't have a lot of flash to it. That there was a lot of consistency 
in the house and that the house was understated and would blend in well with the surroundings without making a large statement. And that was the reason that sometimes it sounds like the metal roof, metal columns, metal doors, metal windows, everything graphite gray, and, and people tend to go, oh my God, it's a metal building. But really what it is is a stucco building with a consistency of graphite gray detailing in the fenestrations and what have you that keep this building really low profile. There's no overhanging eaves. There's no corbels. There's no, none of that sort of stuff. But the idea is also not to make it look like a contemporary home. It's just more of a leaner country, if you'll excuse the expression, ranch home that was not overbuilt and was used, the same detailing was used throughout. Um, as far as, if I could, I'd like to pass this out. I live on Cerro Gordo in the same neighborhood, and I walk Cerro Gordo and Upper Canyon Road a lot. And over the years, I've taken an inventory of the obvious pitched roof homes on, on that loop in those neighborhoods. And there's a lot of them. And personally, um, having built many pitched roof homes in Santa Fe myself and designed them, and um, looking at the vernacular of the pitched roof house in Santa Fe in Northern New Mexico, really a lot of these original pitched roof houses were built on top of flat roof houses. And the flat roof houses were dirt roof houses and they leaked and it was a problem, but that's the way houses were built in those days. And when the pitched roof showed up on the trains and they were available, some of the earliest houses, a lot of which I've renovated, they actually built the pitches out of Vegas because that's what they had to use. And they would take two by fours and sink them into the Vegas and then they'd put the metal on top of that. But what a great thing, all of a sudden the roofs didn't leak anymore. And that was how it happened. And it really became a very part of this vernacular of what happened in New Mexico. And it really was a great advantage to these people that had old flat roof houses that were leaking that had mud roofs on them. And so it's not, I have a feeling that people tend to look at pitched roofs as it's a modern style that's been brought into Santa Fe, where it's really a very, very old contributing style in the historic district. But the detailing of it can be taken to an extent that it can be overstated. So on top of that, Upper Canyon Road is a very snowy area in a lot of winters, this winter being one of them. And being on the north face of Upper Canyon Road, it, very, it, it dries or it melts very slowly and it freezes and it melts and it freezes and it melts and it freezes, which is hard on flat roof areas. And pitched roof construction in the low profile picture of construction makes it easier to catch the rainwater, makes it easier, easier to deal with snow buildup on roofs, and uh, is a real benefit to the homeowners in those areas. I've worked up on Upper Canyon Road many times and have just recently too and been dealing with ice and snow. And some of those driveways up there are the very last ones to, to um, melt in this area. So not to get carried away with the pitch truth, but I think there's a lot of reasons. Also, when you talk about a 14 foot, 10 foot allowance on a house, you could be talking about if you look at these pictures that we were looking at at the pitch roof, the very top of that pitch roof, it could all be house. It could all be a straight up wall going to 14 feet, 10 high, all the way along. That's allowed by the code. But the idea of a house that pitches at nine feet back to 14 foot 10 is, is not being considered, which really from an architectural style or a visual style, it's less obvious because it's leaning in the land and it's leaning back with the hillside, which is a very large hillside right behind it. You have a house going up with a roof leaning back. You have a landscape that's going up slowly, a huge hill behind it that's leaning back as well. And having a, a house that relates to that, as opposed to a house that sits, stands 14 foot, 10 feet high, straight across all solid adobe, 
my feeling is, and seeing it in many places throughout Santa Fe, it's a much less visible structure. In other words. Thank you. Uh, yes, Member Guida. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. McDowell, thank you for explaining that. I, I, and I think um, I think it's an underappreciated point. I mean, a, a couple of things on the style front. This is this is the review district. There is no architectural style mandated. Um, as far as the definition of this is a ranch style, I, I agree with you that that you know Beverly Spears' book on the on on northern New Mexico adobes and pitched roof adobes. That's really the term that we're talking about. Uh, homes that were built out of adobe that had earthen roofs and where uh, after the railroads came in the addition of a metal roof was applied that is part of northern new mexico architecture which is inclusive of santa fe and we saw a lot of them and many of them have been reversed um but i i do have a lot of access to that being a valid style in the historic districts um and one that is complementary of a kind of uh of of the architecture that we find in this area, even the portion of it that is in the downtown and east side historic district. Um, I also think it's compatible with the requirements of the code, right? That we still have a wall dominated um, architecture. It just so happens to have a roof, the height of which is proportionally less than the height of the wall as you explained. And so I, I think that's great. Um, I and and the Morin House by by Beverly Spears is actually a great example, um, and I see that in your packet. Um, uh, and there's a humbleness to to those forms. There's a, a kind of a, a real nod to to traditional forms that you know that we're also after in the review districts, while being honest about the time and place in which a contemporary house is constructed. Um, the questions I have really are about some of the detailing that your that your uh, drawing suggests. So I I think it's a I think both homes are 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 quite beautiful in their massing. Um, in terms Rita, of Rita, if I might interrupt you, would you kindly put up the elevations? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, are really quite nice. Um, you may need to let Gary in. Um, in terms of the the massing, I appreciated seeing the architectural models. Um, the relationship of the houses to each other, to the existing house that's on the on one of the sites, I think it's really smartly conceived, um, and it's and again it's very honest about um, the types of forms that we have here, the requirements of the code, um, and uh, of doing a building uh, of its time and place. Um, I think that you know the question was raised by staff about the depth of the the windows. I think that's one question I have for you. What What is the intent there in terms of the window location? And the second question that I have for you is um, about the stucco colors and, and whether you would be open to either reducing or doing these homes in a each one in a single stucco color rather than alternating stucco. But maybe you could explain more about that. Easiest way to answer the question about the fenestrations and how they'd be detailed. It is our intention to really copy what you see in the Marin photographs. That's how they'll be done. The Luella uh, Knowles, who owns this property with her husband, Jung Kyun, um, she is not well versed, even though she lived here for about 25 years, in the how to actually, she's the architect, but how to detail that look. So that will be coming up in the if we move ahead with the detailed drawings. But the reason that we included the Marin House was so that you could see how we actually saw it being detailed and finished out in that way. Um, the second one, in regards to looking at the ideas of different colors, I think it would be more open. I mean, certainly if it came down to you do it one color, you don't do it. It's probably gonna be one color. But I think it would be nice to find some balance in there where two colors could be used. And, and a good example of that is a lot of houses which have long Pueblo style houses that have long portals that have the uh, brown base and then have the white above it to lighten up the portal. So maybe there's a wild way to do that in areas to just 
highlight those areas without overdoing. I, we would be yeah. open to the concept. Great. And, and, I, and, you know, in the, in the precedent that you cite, you know, we see, you know, windows recess three, four, six inches in places, but we also see in your design recesses in the entry and, 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 and kind of architectural features that, that, that create shadow lines and, and all of the, and the, and the impression of thickness. So I'm, I'm, I'm appreciative of that. Um, and, and I certainly think that that would be a condition that this board would place on it. As far as the colors go, I, I guess I'm looking for something more strategic, right? I think that, you know, this idea of kind of, or at least the way it was explained of alternating stucco colors is a little bit worrisome just because of kind of bad examples that we've seen in the past. And I think what you're suggesting in the way of a kind of more strategic application of colors, um, particularly in the way that we see them more traditionally under portals, I think would be my preference for, for how to 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 apply color to this but i would understand too that you'd want to differentiate one property from another so that makes sense i agree with you and i think that's the concept of i'm not to bring in somebody who you look at john gall meme and, and the patterns of he looked at patterns of architecture and brought them into his time and so yes that pattern if it was brought into this time i think could be well done and still have some definition to those times thank you and as far as three pools, there's one pool at each house and a couple of water features. Okay. Board members, uh, other questions or comments at this time? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, in the historic review district, you know, it it does state that the intent is to emulate traditional Santa Fe architecture and construction traditions. It doesn't say northern New Mexico, which is what this reminds me of. It says Santa Fe architecture. So there isn't much about this design that I think um, is respecting Santa Fe architecture. I think there's a lot that stands out. I mean, the pitched roof, the color of the pitched roof, the code also, you know, says even if a pitched roof is allowed, um, local earth tones are preferred, not a dark charcoal gray. We have the steel trellises, the Corton steel walls, you know, the circular windows. I mean, I, I hate to compare it to the house on Cordova that everyone seems to dislike, but there are some similarities there. Um, so in general, I can't see a way forward approving this design tonight as we're seeing it. And this is more of an issue, I guess, with the city, but it, three, I counted four water features and three pools is just completely irresponsible of a homeowner to have that on a property. And unfortunately, the city allows it. I hope that's something we can change, but in an arid climate, there's no reason for three pools and four water features. So that's really disheartening to see um, in our community when we have so many residents who go out of their way every day to conserve water. Um, so words like humble and modest in relation to this project, I just think are a little funny when then on the other side, we're saying things like three pools and four water features and um, multiple structures. So. Uh, that's all I have for now. Thank you, Chair. I could respond to that, please. Yes. There's two pools and there's two water features. And certainly, I agree with you with exactly what you said about water features. And that's why this board is here. So this board may come to the conclusion or even the uh, the city that they're not going to allow the water feature. They're not going to, that those things are not acceptable. And the part of an approval, if there was an approval, could be to agree to take those out. I hear you and I agree with you. Would you describe the water features? What exactly is that? Uh, it would be a, something would be about that deep and have about that much water in it. It would just be water to cool things off. I think that my personal opinion is that it's not, it probably works well where um, the well it comes from, but in this situation, it really wouldn't have a lot of appropriateness. And for the 1500 uh, house, they want two pools, and the other one wants one swimming pool? One pool at each lot. And the idea is that they're going to live in the one house, 
and they're going to build the other house for sale at some time to help to help to pay for the other house and they're going to live here full time also what you described the there's a vehicular gate at the front of the property correct at the front of the 1500 uh, property Sorry. a vehicular gate the vehicular gate would be made out of black metal and uh it's they actually have a And is that 20 feet long, four feet high? Any other questions, comments? Once again, uh, yes. Member Aguilar Medran. Thank you, Madam Chair. Just a question for staff. The I know you're using the rule about the 50% and which districts to apply. Is that said in the code somewhere? Because I think it's more common when, when you have two conditions, typically the more restrictive one applies. Um, so I'm just is that up for debate tonight? Which district that this is part of, or is that stated somewhere in the code that greater than 50% of the property? It will be that part of the district. Chair Rios and uh, Member Aguilar Medrano, that is not a height exception, which is limited to the districts that I read off in response to Member Bienvenue's question. That's uh, a section that of uh, D9D that is just specific to pitch. Subsection D applies to all historic districts. Thank you. Um, Except with respect to height, which is limited to the historic districts and including the review district that's at the end of Canyon Street or accessible by Canyon Street and nine other streets that are listed there. But is the rule that Heather was saying about this is being considered the historic review district because more than 50% of the property is in that district, is that on the table tonight for discussion? Heather? Member um, Aguilar Medrano, the um, that is I was just double checking with Gary. That is a process that generally is applied. Um, certainly, if the board were to disagree with that assessment, the board may do so. It's, this property is accessed from Canyon Road, right? Or both properties are? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you, Heather and Frank. Well, Member Benvenu. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your presentation. Um, yeah, the, uh, I'm not too fixated on the swimming pools other than it's, it's of interest, I think, to everyone when those do kind of jump out at you. But just so you know, the I don't know if this is an error or not, but the staff report does say that there will be three swimming pools, two at the main residence and one at the guest house at 1596 Canyon Road and additional an additional swimming pool at 1600 candy Road. it is an error so how, how many are there and where are they there's one pool at 1600 and there's one pool at 1596 yeah. requested um yeah and the i suppose the issue really is this thing about the pitched group primarily for us tonight um and you know, this is something that we grapple with not uncommonly, as you know, and I'm sure you've been here before talking about that very issue on, on other occasions. Um, there's a common confusion or um, at least a, a feeling of misunderstanding in the public about why pitched roofs aren't allowed, because to many people, they are, of course, a very traditional form of New Mexico architecture and they're located um, all over New Mexico. And you found uh, a beautiful example in Galisteo, but they're in Tosuki, they're all over uh, north of Santa Fe and you can find them in Santa Fe. Um, so they, there's no question, but that they are a traditional form of architecture. But um, as you know, our ordinance um, and the governing body in drafting it and uh, amending it on numerous occasions in its wisdom has decided that's not Santa Fe style and specifically as excluded. 
uh, pitched roofs except under very limited circumstances. So that that battle, I don't think, is really before this board. You know, that's properly taken to the governing body uh, whether or not the code should be amended to permit uh, northern New Mexico style pitched roofs, such as the example that you said you were modeling these properties from. But clearly, they're not they're not accepted in in Santa Fe under our current ordinance. Again, except under limited circumstances. So there's a clear preference against them, in fact, a prohibition. And I would say that most of the the examples that you located, which I'm also familiar with on Cerro Gordo and Upper Canyon Road, most of many of them, if not most of them, predate the 1957 ordinance. Some of them may have been um, uh, added after without approval because we know of some of those and some of them may have been permitted with exceptions but regardless of that all of them are outside of the streetscape um, as uh, our ordinance provides um, for calculations of what's allowable on these specific properties so i guess not only do i not think that they control in this case but really uh, utilizing them as a as a reason to permit them in this case would, in essence, be a revision of the code, because we'd be basically saying the exception criteria is met by virtue of the fact that, number one, there are already other pitched roofs in the vicinity, and number two, this is Upper Canyon Road, and, and uh, we're at 7,300 feet, and there's snow. And uh, that's just not something that I think this board is empowered to do. You know, we can't revise the code you know, either expressly or by application. So I don't think that those are adequate justifications for an exception in this case. Um, and in addition, um, allowing it in this case, I think there are, you, you talked about one house, but really I think we're looking at at least eight, am I right, at least eight structures including several residences, several garages, several guest houses, and a studio. Well, let me just see if, if I've got it right. Uh, everything's joined by either a pergola or something. OK, well, I understood that at 1596, a 3,900 square foot main residence, a 585 square foot garage, a 468 square foot studio, a 1,480 square foot guest house, and then another 550 square foot garage for the guest house. They are, in, in most cases, they are connected by architecture. Okay, but they, they would all have pitched roofs yeah, under right. this plan. And I, I mean, I have to say, I've in, I see it a lot. I, I, I hike up the Daleville Trail off of Hyde Park Road, looking over towards um, Maybe that's Sierra Del Norte and what have you. There's a couple cases there where there's a lot of full height Pueblo style homes. Right next to them, there's this pitch roof homes that are graphite gray. And the graphite gray becomes shadow. And then next to them, there's a red roof. And the red roof becomes this big rectangular red as opposed to shadow. So it's, I, I just can't help but, and I've built a lot of these pitch roofs and design them over the years. And so much of it has to do is just with detail. And in many cases, in my at least opinion in this situation is that these homes will be less visible than a 14 foot 10 tall, foot tall homes of these size, parapet Pueblo style home. And what you're gonna be seeing, and it's shown up in the digital versions that were shown, set back off the road, there's gonna be trees that are already there and more trees planted to try and negate any impact, negative impact to neighbors or to the streetscape from a person's point of view that may not like the idea of a pitched roof house. And from a designer, architect, builder point of view, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that they're going to be less visible. Right. So again, it's not really a matter of personal preference from my perspective as to liking or disliking pitched roof houses. It's just that they're not permitted in this area. 
and that's what we live with um so it's not it's really not an opinion of, of mine i don't think or perhaps anyone on the board so much as an application of the code and it, again you know putting however many uh, structures with pitched roofs in this one location um with i don't know 10 or 12,000 square feet of roof it looks like um that would certainly have a large impact, I think, on on the surrounding streetscape as well as the district. So, uh, you know, the, that's my uh, basic uh, view of the exception criteria as they would be applied here. And I do think that we have to apply, um, at least in spirit, the uh, downtown and east side standards as well because at least one of these structures is literally located within that district. And um, certainly the entire properties are in spirit within the downtown and east side district. And our code, even if it does um, have slight, some different standards for the review district, which to some extent I'm sure you're legally entitled to abide by, we also have to evaluate these proposals for a harmony with adjacent buildings and their impact on the on the streetscape and district at large. And I think that brings us right back to looking at how these buildings fit in to that upper Canyon Road streetscape, which is quite rural. And um, I think would have a these buildings would have a very, very strong deleterious impact on that, not only with the pitched roofs, but also the um, the contemporary styling of the uh, the color choices and the uh, the significant use of metal throughout. So those are my general comments for now. Thank you for your comments, sure. Member Benvenu. Board members, any other comments at this point? I'd like to respond to it. Yes, sure. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. First of all, I think, as I understand it, that it's not in this downtown and historic district. And that less than half of the, the the area on the one property may be, and that would mean it would be qualified as not being because it's less than half a percent. But what I've heard everyone saying is that it would be in the review district, not in the historic and downtown. You stated that it would be. I don't think that's a fact. I was careful to say that you may be right that uh, from a legal perspective, it is in the historic review district, at least partially. Um, but I was saying that there are other provisions in the code that still require us to have harmony with the downtown and east side district, including harmony with the adjacent buildings, which does bring us right back to needing to apply um, streetscape standards, in my view. But no, that does not mean that I'm just assuming the whole thing is in the downtown and east side district, because clearly the majority of it is not. Technically. I'm glad you used that word opinion. You, um, called, you we used that earlier, but also something to remember is these two properties have 11% and 12% coverage of their lot size. That's pretty minimal for being massive and covered, and not having a lot of open space. It's a, it's a big lot. And because it's down on this lower part of the lot and the, the hill is maintained as an entirety, which is part of the lot, I think one of them's 11, the other one might be 14% lot coverage. Not much, when you're allowed 65%. Yes, Heather. Just my question for Mr. McDowell, um, in terms of the lot coverage, is that lot coverage of the buildable area or is it of the- Total lot coverage of the buildings on the lot. Okay, all right, because there are some area in a SCARP district that is not- Thank you, Madam Chair. I just have a couple of clarifying questions for staff, um, and please weigh in too, Mr. McDowell. Um, with respect to the allowable height, is it, the, could you remind me if the fireplace is exempt from that? Chair Rios, member, um, sorry, member Beachside, uh, that is correct. Okay. And then um, with respect to the pitch roof calculation, um, I think the the determination was that 15% of the properties in this the defined area have pitched roofs. If if we were to allow both of these projects to move forward, how would that percentage change? Would 
would that then exceed 50%? Would you count however many, with, if there's eight buildings, um, would you count each of those as toward the the percentage calculation in the future? Rios, um, Member Bishide, no, we would not because they're not historic and will be built after that date of 19. Okay, so the 15% would remain the same, even though we, okay. And then, um. Can we talk about the visibility from Canyon Road for both projects? Um, I think they, they're they behind properties that front Canyon Road, if I understand correctly. So if someone could speak, I know there was um, an image and a rendering in the packet too that seems to try to show what we'll see from Canyon Road, but we could just talk about how much of the projects are visible from Canyon. That would be helpful. Rios member Beachite. Um, the there are two single story houses that are in front of these homes. The the terrain actually goes higher than Canyon Road itself. One thing Mr. McDowell was referring to trees, which can be effective at screening buildings, but in the, partic the case of the historic districts ordinance, we really don't count trees or like we had the conversation about the coyote fence as something that um, is that because it can be removed is not part of the consideration. Right. I could also comment that houses will be, as the hill is sloping up, houses will be cut in fairly significantly in the back so that they don't stick up to the, height, okay. the higher part. And will you see both houses from Canyon Road? Yes. That's correct. So if you're viewing from Canyon Road, lots are going uphill. So if you're looking at the front of the house and the back of the house, the back of the house. Got it. Thank you. Oh, and sorry, one more question. Yes. Um, what is our authority or um, ability to address pools, which I think might be considered landscaping? Is 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 that within our purview at all? Chair Rios, uh, Member Beachhead, no, that's not within the purview, although you can encourage the applicant sure. to be more water-wise. And it may be difficult. I'm not sure if there's been any conversation with the utilities division of city, but um, the water department might have some concerns about the amount of water and potential offset that would be needed or water rights that might be needed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I certainly think it's a point that I would be welcome to take up with the owners. Maybe consider an Asikia fed pool. <laughs> Anyone else before we go to public comment? Anyone from the public here wishing to speak on this project, please come forward. If there's more than one of you, uh, you can get sworn in at the same time. Chair Rios, if I might point out, there were also some letters that were left on your desk that we received through Thank you. Um, I'll ask you to summarize those after a while. I haven't read them. You will need to get for an answer. You can state your name and your address, please. My name is Terrence Padilla, uh, address 1594 Upper Canyon Road. Thank you, Mr. Padilla. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to this item shall be the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalty of perjury? Madam Chair, Mr. Padilla is sworn. Good evening. Um, Good evening, and speak right into that mic. Good evening, please. Madam Chair, and uh, the rest of the board. Um, we have concerns, um, and I have a list of them here. I'm just going to Try to read them off. Uh, some of them you, you've addressed already. So uh, first of all, um, we're directly north of the property and adjacent to uh, uh, 1596. Um, we're opposed, opposed to the project, uh, the development of the two properties, 1596 and 1600, based on the architectural design. The pitch roofs are something that we're really concerned with. Um, the aesthetically, the, the projected uh, dwellings do not have historical Santa Fe style, as, as you've addressed somewhat, um, uh, to the other homes in the area. Um, the, the other homes in the area are obviously parapet and uh, 
you know, stucco designed with flat roofs. Um, the proposal tries to meet the uh, 1410 height restriction, but it does not take consideration for the elevation. He did describe that the, the houses would be lowered in the back end, but uh, due to the elevation, it, it rises from the street level probably uh or real close to 120 feet to the to the acequia okay so that's considerable height difference from the the street level to the end of the property uh our house is affected by that uh, especially the guest house that's in front it's directly right behind us within 25 feet so it actually looks like i mean it'd be towering you know right in front of us and you know the, the uh, not only the pitched roof but also the uh, fireplaces, they're enormous. They're they're re really really wide and really really tall. So they exceed the height level of the pitched roofs themselves. That's real concerning, and that doesn't follow any architectural uh, of Santa Fe whatsoever, or any anything that in the area looks like that. So. Um, Your two minutes are up, but if you'd like to say, finish your comments, uh, okay, so you may. Basically, we're opposed to uh, that and also the water features, evaporation, you know, Santa Fe, you know, we should all be concerned about water. Uh, swimming pools just isn't appropriate for this area. Thank you, Mr. Padilla, very much for your comments. Mr. Rara, you need to get sworn in. You did speak, but you weren't sworn in. And Mr. Rara, did you state your address previously? Thank you. Uh, do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to this item shall be the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalty of perjury? Madam, Madam Chair, Mr. Herrera is sworn. Here we go again, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, the historic district was established for a reason to keep Santa Fe historic as far as uh, our, our um, okay, here we go. In order to honor our ancestors and our parents and grandparents, a lot of uh, our relatives were born and raised on Canyon Road. And um, we talk about Northern New Mexico homes while well, we were talking about Betty Stewart. We were talking up about a few others here in town in Tezuka. Uh These were regular Betty Stewart homes, 2,000 square feet per se. And they were in the Northern New Mexico style. This thing belongs in Aspen, Colorado or, or down south in Galisteo or where we have space for a ranch house. And this is more or less what this represents. A typical ranch house with all kinds of buildings connected to it. The architecture doesn't fit any part of Santa Fe, as far as I'm concerned, even though some people uh, have been trying to change the uh, character of Santa Fe, which I object to, but uh, that's another issue. And also the thing about swimming pools, that's ridiculous. For anyone to think of putting a swimming pool, and I thought it had been out loud, Maybe Mayor Weber brought it back into perspective, but uh, at one point it was out loud and it should be with the water situation, the way it is and everything. So I urge the board to deny this request with all due respect to Mr. McDowell. And uh, let's proceed in protecting what we have. Thank you.
Thank you, Mr. Ojeda. Anyone else in this room wishing to speak in reference to these two projects? It appears not. Anyone on Zoom? Yes, Chair Rios. Uh, moment. Adrian, um, please, you may unmute and um, please state your name and address for the record, and Frank will swear you in. Yes, good evening. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Adrian Oglesby. And my wife, Maxine Paul, and I own the house at 1600 Canyon Road. Uh, my, uh, our, our address is actually 2103 Los Luceros Road in Albuquerque. Um, we're currently renting the house while we're um, trying to become wealthy enough to afford to live in it. This will be our retirement home, and we hope to move there as soon as possible. Thank you, Mr. Oglesby. Do you solemnly declare and affirm that the testimony you have in reference to this item shall be the truth and nothing but the truth under the penalty of perjury? Well, certainly do. Go ahead, sir. You have the floor. Okay. Thank you, uh, Chair Rios and members of the board. Um, and with all due respect to my future neighbors, who I hope to have a wonderful relationship with, um, we uh, join Mr. Padilla uh, in um, opposing this development as it currently is designed. Um, I, I personally love a good pitched roof. I understand the value of it. Our skylights at 1600 leak constantly due to the, the, the low uh, profile. Um, and uh, certainly if you approve his the, these pitch roofs, I'll be saving my money and coming to you and trying to get one myself. Um, but, but overall, I, I think um, our, our opposition is based on the scale of this development. Uh, the overall scale is, is out of keeping with the community. Um, it's very dense. Um, and while I respect Mr. McDowell's math in saying that it's only 10 or 11% of the developable space, um, uh, from the north side of the Isekia up is completely undevelopable. It's very steep land. And um, so really this is cramming a bunch of square footage onto as, uh, as much as possible onto um, the footprint of this land. Uh, I, I appreciate the, the style of the massive walls. I think that is in keeping, but they're very modern in style. Uh, I think Mr. McDowell was right. This style of, of house would, would look great down in South Texas. Um, but it uh, seems very out of keeping with um, the community that we moved into and, and love because of its historic nature. We'll be the ones staring at this property um, you know, every day out of our back window. Um, just to reinforce what staff has already told you, you know, the windows and doors are not in set. We've got a gray graphite roof that's not you know, traditional corrugated tin, as you would see in New Mexico. Alternating colors, modern lights, doors, windows, rain chains, these are all things that I, I do not see in our neighborhood as, as I walk around. Um, I, I will, as, as a commissioner on the Acequia del Llano and a Parciante, uh, I just want to state for the record and make it clearly understood that Acequia water is not to be used for swimming pools. It is only allowed to be used for irrigation. And so I hope that there is no intention right, of using our and, precious and finish your thought. I most certainly will. Thank you, ma'am. Um, so in closing, I would just say that um, this is you know, a, a beautiful but, but very modern and contemporary property uh, that's being proposed, not historic in spirit and certainly not in harmony with the community that we have now. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Anyone else? Heather? Yes, Chair Rios. Stephanie Beninato. And I believe you have been sworn. No, she's been sworn in. Yes, I have been sworn in. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. We can hear you throughout. If you could you just like raise your hand, please, Miss Rios, if you stop hearing me so I could try to like adjust my mic and see if I could get back to being heard. Anyway, I support uh, much of the. Um, what you're doing uh, right now, we can hear you. Okay. Now, for some reason, your voice just fades. Okay. So I. Uh, I support much of the concerns that have been expressed through uh, member Bienvenu, for example, uh, member Aguilar Madrano, and uh, the speakers who are in close proximity. Too much metal, too contemporary, um, not at all Santa Fe style. Uh, although there's massive walls, again, it just it just doesn't fit in at all. And um, and the swimming pools, too, again, I know you don't have any say on that, but it just shows a, a complete disregard for the environment and for the community, in, in my opinion. 
And yes, it, I think it is massive. I think there's just a, a, a large number of structures that are being crammed into these properties. Um, and in the sense, it's a little bit disappointing um, that there's like this need for mega development up there. And, and I do know there are large lots, but it's a small area of development on each lot. And I do think the meadow will stick out more because you're looking at the escarpment, which is actually has vegetation on it. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie. Anyone else on Zoom? Arias, no. If you would like me to review the... Just quickly, if you could tell us how many letters were submitted and how many were for or and how many were against the project. Uh, so Chair Rios, all of them were against, and um, they were associated with both projects. Some uh, folks commented on both projects um, by the name of Armijo and Martinez. Thank you. So, um, board members, if you have no further comments, uh, member, yes, member Beach. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just, I just would like to clarify for the record that my comment about Asekia Fed pools was absolutely made in jest. I think it's incredibly ironic that um, this property is being set between Historic Canyon Road and an Asekia um, with you know the pitch roof, the use of aluminum windows, the metal post and um, beams, and the frosted glass, the stucco colors, like all of that um, seems incredibly um, ill-conceived in this particular site. So I did not mean to imply that I was um, serious about that comment. So thank you. Anybody else? Member Guida. Thank you, Madam Chair. I, I, just a few personal comments. I'm, I'm a bit troubled by the tenor of conversation, both from the board and from the public tonight about this case. Um, there seems to be a lot of, I mean, we witness a, a great deal of exaggeration in in uh, in both in, in comments often about cases about slippery slopes and the destruction of the historic districts. Um, to hear it coming from the board, just to hear an inflation of the square footage of repeatedly of the pools of the number of st structures, um, of the comparison of a well-designed project like this one to builder schlock that we see on um, on on uh, on Galisteo and Cordova, uh, which is a terrible house outside of the historic district. Um, the um, the mischaracterization characterization of the style. Um, I'm really, as an architect, as a preservation architect, as a member of this community, I'm I'm really dismayed by that level of exaggeration, mischaracterization, what I feel is really intolerance uh, of good design. Um, what this case really comes down to um, is, is the district that it's in, which is the review district. And as I recall, the review district we have reviewed and have seen and is home to mid-century interpretations of Santa Fe style. Um, uh, we have sat in this room and reviewed uh, a, a medieval castle proposal um, from one of the most prominent members of our community, uh, which wasn't what which was which didn't have to pursue a style exception necessarily because there are no style requirements in the review district. There is no Santa Fe style articulated um, in the district review requirements. It is simply wall dominated um, and, and so on and so forth. I think that you know any attempt to kind of push this into the downtown and east side historic district is disingenuous. The code is very clear. The, um, the height considerations from that district apply to this. There's a, there's a there's a special code section that we've read that tonight, and the applicant is acknowledging and following those height exceptions. So style-wise, I think this is acceptable for the review district. We don't have this 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 um, this rule of flat roofed adobes, pitched roof adobes are part of Santa Fe style, uh, Northern New Mexico style. Santa Fe is part of Northern New Mexico. This is all. Uh, this all makes sense. There are pitch roofs buildings in the city. In fact, we've repeatedly had this discussion and this argument about pitch roofs and a conflict that exists in the current code between the general standards around pitch roofs that require 
often an exception. And other places, such as in the, the West Side Guadalupe district, where they're specifically encouraged, but require an exception to get. And so, you know, a consideration of pitched roofs in this case seems to make sense. I mean, it would seem to me that the board could entertain a notion of pitched roofs in this case. The 300 foot rule uh, doesn't really apply because these are enormous parcels. The streetscape rule doesn't apply, but I think the applicant has done an admirable job of showing where those pitched roofs um, exist so that we can get closer to satisf satisfying a very, a very um, restrictive and flawed ordinance in this particular case. We've passed them before, we've seen them before, and in fact, we, we passed a, a pitched roof, rural looking building on Canyon Road that's that's publicly visible just a, just a couple of weeks ago. I think, you know, the, um, you know, this notion of rural and the association of pitched roof adobes with it makes sense for where this is located. Um, I don't think it harms the character of the district on Canyon Road because that is, is well maintained by the buildings that are there. So, you know, I really question, you know, I, I think we have a way forward. I would argue that we have a way forward on the pitch roof discussion and granting an exception. You know, I understand this is a big house. I'm not arguing for, you know, fairness and equity tonight and that, that I often do. You know, this is rich people and building big houses. Um, you know, but that's this is this is how we get there by a restrictive and exclusionary zoning ordinance, and by this kind of continued um, pushing against um, applicants and against good design in the districts to exclude, exclude, exclude. I'd like to remind folks that the reason why we even have a historic districts ordinance is because of the work of the 20th century that was done in Santa Fe, which was done by designers, which was innovated, invented here, and evolved over the course of the 20th century. In other words, the Santa Fe style was created for tourism and for economic development at a time when we didn't have those things. And we relied on architects and people with vision for creating new buildings and evolving a style that is related to this place, but not necessarily of this place. Um, Preservation is an act of, of, of cultural preservation. The idea that we would exclude and make it more difficult to do good design in Santa Fe is highly problematic and antithetical to the reason why we have a, a district code. Thank you. I want to say a couple of things. Um, when people come, take their time to come and speak before this board, I think we on this board need to respect people's comments. Um, I think a lot of those people that spoke here this evening are longtime Santa fans. They have lived here for a long time. I think they understand the uh, area. They understand the architecture. And uh, I would hope that we on the board, just like the public should respect us, we should have the same respect for the public. And as far as uh, Santa Fe style, Santa Fe style was created by the people a long time ago that live, lived here, that vernacular type of architecture. They used the, uh, the materials that were, that are, uh, that surrounded us. They made adobes out of the, the dirt that surrounded us. And they used vigas because that's what we had. Then later on, when the train came through here, uh, then uh, we had bricks that we could make uh, territorial style also came into being. But my main, main message is that I think we all have opinions and um, we all need to respect one another. I think that particularly in this day and age, um, and I certainly feel that that is something that we all need to do towards one another. Respect your opinion. With that being said, if there's nothing further to state, uh, I will entertain a motion. One. 
but discuss this case. Cases, I will entertain a motion actually for the first case, which is located at 1596 Canyon Road. Member Benvenu. Thank you, Madam Chair. In case number 2023-006490, HDRB 1596 Canyon Road. Um, for the reasons set forth on the record tonight, and as set forth in the staff report, um, I move that findings be entered that the exception criteria have not been met for the uh, pitched roof on any of the proposed structures and further that the um, proposed design of those structures, including the detailing, does not comply with the ordinance, which requires um, that any proposed new structure be in harmony with adjacent buildings and that we consider the preservation of historical and characteristic qualities in addition to conformity to the standards for architectural style as set forth in the two, uh, well, in the historic review district section, which also provides that and structures be designed to be structures with massive walls um, in order to emulate traditional Santa Fe architecture and construction traditions, which implies um, that the other aspects of Santa Fe architecture and construction traditions also be incorporated into that standard. And based on those findings that um, conclusions of law be entered that the application be denied. Aguilar Madrano will second. Is there anything further to add? To add a uh, roll call vote, please. Member Baldo? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Benvenu? Yes. Member Vice Chair Guida? No. Member Aguilar Marjano? Yes. Member Bishide? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. It has been approved. For Thank you. The application has been denied, and I will move on to the uh, 1600 Canyon Road. I will entertain a motion. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Chair. In case number 2023-006565 HDRB, 1600 Canyon Road, I move that um, the uh, same findings be entered and the same conclusion of law be adopted by the board as was set forth for 1596 Canyon Road and for the same reasons. Is there a second? I second the motion. Anything further to add? No? Roll call vote, please. Member Bishide? Yes. Member Aguilar Madrano? Yes. Vice Chair Quida? No. Member Benvenu? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Baldo? Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. It has been approved for denial. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McNeil. We will move on to the next case this evening, which is located at, oh, the last case this evening, at uh, 1072 Camino San Acasio. And I see that the applicant is here. And uh, Gary, I'll give you something like a few seconds to clear the room. And then you can give us your uh, case presentation. Thank you. Here we go, members of the H Board. Uh, case number 2024-007994, HDRB, is uh, 1072 Camino San Acasio for a remodel. 
1072 Camino San Acasio is on the south side of the road just west of Camino de Lora. Single family residence located at 1072 San Acasio is listed as non contributing in the downtown Eastside Historic District. The 1,385 square foot two story residence was designed in the 1981. 1981 constructed in 1982 and 83 in recent Santa Fe style to a height of 20 feet 5 inches features a shed roof, partial firewall parapets, and integrated garage. And a passive solar design, including a trim wall on the south elevation. The resident is, is accessed via a private driveway and is located approximately 110 feet south of Camino San Acasio. The building is approximately 12 feet higher than the Camino San Acasio street grade. In 19 1996, under case H96057, the H HDRE approved the construction of a 662 square feet Spanish Pueblo style guest house on the northern portion of the property adjacent to Camino San Acasio. No other cases were found in the historic Preservation Division records. Additionally, the property contains a garden shed and a storage shed. The applicant has shared these historic architectural elevations, the original designs of the, the house in 1981. The applicant proposed the following exterior alterations. Construct a 79 square foot addition on the north elevation to a height of 11 feet 4 inches with a maximum allowable height is 16 feet 3 inches to the main residence. Two painted wood, wood casement windows on the north side of the addition will match the existing window trim paint in Dunn Edwards blue spruce. Door will be stained wood in monofin, Brazilian rosewood, and our casement divided light windows. Reconstruct the existing trellis adjacent to the proposed additions on the north elevation. Relocate a section of the six foot high stucco yard wall on the north side of the residence, including a stained wood pedestrian gate, Brazilian rosewood. Stucco the residents using current stove synthetic in suede. The small addition shows, shows on the east, west, and north elevation and will be publicly visible on the north elevation. The applicant also proposes the following. Construct a detached 265 square foot shed in the height of 11 foot 7 feet inches. To the south of the resident, the shed will feature a single hung vertical wooden sliding window and a flush metal single utility door. A custom double swing stained wooden door with light in color Brazilian rosewood. The shed will be stuccoed in stove synthetic suede. Staff recommends approval of the proposed project and finds that the applicant complies with Section 14-5.2D, General Design Standards for All Historic Districts, and 14-5.2E, Downtown and Eastside Design Standards. And for questions. Thank you, Gary. Um, the shed is, am I correct in stating this, the shed is behind the house and is not publicly visible? That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions or clar for clarification or whatever? Applicant, will you come forward and get sworn in? You state your name and address, please. My name is Jacob Kaltenbach, 1072 Camino San Acasio. Thank you. Sir, do you solemnly declare and affirm the testimony you have in reference to this item is the truth, nothing but the truth, that you do this under the penalty of perjury. I do. <clears throat> Madam Chair, the applicant has been sworn. Good evening. Do you have anything more to add? Uh, good evening, uh, Chairwoman Rios, and to the board members. I know it's very late, and I don't want to go on too long, but I, I just wanted to say that um, 
although this is a non-contributing structure, structure and it's uh, not yet historical, it is in the historical district, and I'm very proud to to be here because it has some history for me. Um, this was my grandparents' house, and um, I watched it being built. I helped build it. I actually lived in it for a time with them as a child, um, so I know this neighborhood. Um, there was a period after they uh, passed away in the 1990s when it was not um, a property that I had any controlling interest in or ability to to guide. And and I'm happy that in 2000, my wife and I were able to um, to acquire reacquire it as a home for our daughters um, and our family. So um, I, I apologize actually for the condition of some of the property. Um, we wanted to move forward as soon as possible in 2000 to make these changes because that trellis was beginning to collapse um, due to the age. And um, the pandemic and other other things de delayed that. So I'm very happy to be here to to make these changes and to also I think although the integrated garage door was a part of the original design, um, and I have great respect for my grandfather's memory. I, I never felt that was in keeping with the that streetscape. So I feel like this change would would address that at the same time. Board members, do you have questions for the applicant? No questions, no comments. Um, I think you indicated um, the applicant had to come out because this is Lanny's case. And when we were on the field trip, he actually had to give us a bit of help on exactly what he was going to do because uh, Gary kind of took over and was not totally familiar at that point. And so he said, the applicant told us that, um, I think you indicated that when your grandparents came before the board, you were ten years old. Or... Yes, yes, I was. I was ten years old when they first came before this board. And probably you had no interest at that time. I actually, I had enormous interest. I'd... Oh, you did have an yeah, interest. Yeah. Oh, cool. I, I didn't want to be an architect and builder like my father, but uh, I, I, I was interested in the project, and I, like I said, I helped. I helped work on the house to a small degree. Oh, okay. And are you an architect? No. No, I'm not. not your phone was. Okay. Uh, anyone in the public wishing to comment? It's just the board, I mean, staff members. Yes. I just make one one very small, it's not a correction, but on the shed in the back, it was stated that it's 11 foot some. It's actually eight foot six on the rear because there's a change in the grade. And so it's only, it's 11 foot from, from it's 11 foot from the grade on the uh, north side of the shed. But uh, most of that is taken up by an existing retaining wall. Okay. Anyone on Zoom wanting to comment? Chair Rios, no one has their okay. it's raised. Board members, you uh, looks like you don't have any questions, and I will entertain a motion, please. Madam Chair, I'll make a motion. Yes. Um, case 2024-007-994-HDRB-1072, Camino San Ocasio. Uh, I move that the board approve uh, the project as submitted in line with staff recommendations. Aguilar Madrano, second. Roll call vote, please. Member Valdo. Yes. Member Mather. Yes. Member Benvenu. Yes. Vice Chair Guido. Yes. Member Madeline Madrano. Aguilar Madrano. Yes. <laughs> and Member Bishai. Yes. Madam Chair, it's been approved. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good luck on your project. Thank you very much. Full house. Uh, discussion items. Anything under discussion items? Chair Rios, no, we discussed the preservation awards. Uh, just one quick clarification. On what date is that? May 9th? May 9th. Yes, and it'll be at the San Miguel Chapel. Um, and Thank you. a little context on San Miguel Chapel nomination is that project was done by Cornerstones and pro profiled in the National Trust for Historic Preservation newsletter. Oh, so, okay, great. Um, yeah, so it's, it's a good project. I have one quick thing under matters from the board. So I need a clarification. So members Beachside and Benvenu were appointed to a subcommittee uh, in reference, I thought it was, to the um, state uh, capital project. Uh, are they a subcommittee to any state project? Arios, um, no, we did talk about one project at Jaseki Madrid School. Oh, okay, that's for... Yeah. This all comes in. Right. And and so that Mr. Mokina should have emailed them the drawings for any potential comments or concerns. 
and um, then only for the state capitol, I, I'm sorry, the executive office building project, right. uh, which includes the demolition of the four bungalows. Just so that you know, um, the state invoked the state statute that requires the local um, and state uh, commission to review the project. We uh, will need to get a vote from the board, but not at this time. We met with the um, Ana Silva, um, the council for the state. Um, I can't remember his last name, but Alexis is his first name. Johnson. Um, and then Frank uh, Rubelied, as well as Aaron McSherry were there, and I was there, and J Jason Fluke. And we talked about the process. And so we're sort of, we threw out some ideas and they're going to be getting back to us and we should um, know some further details soon. We probably, I need to put it on agenda. We'll probably have a formal vote next time. Frank, do you have anything to add? No, nothing further. Thank you. I think you described it quite, uh, quite fairly. Thank you. Anything else, board members? Today. Thank you, Madam Chair, and thank you for raising the capital outlay committee projects because I do have a question about the Sequia Madre capital outlay project. Like, we did receive the drawing that I provided just one minor comment, and I just am curious what, what is the next step? Are we going to hear that as a full board? Yes, it'll be presented to the board okay. once the designs are complete and okay. you guys all agree with it, then we'll I'll do a little um, information and I'll do a presentation on it. Okay. Thank you. Member Benvenu. Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. I'll follow up on that. Is, yes, yeah, I'm not exactly clear what our next step is as the subcommittee. Um, are we, uh, you sent us some sort of preliminary drawings. Are we at this point supposed to be providing feedback or should we be meeting with the designer to discuss the proposal? Yes, we're to meet with the um, designer and we'll dis dis discuss the... So the, the two of uh, Member Beachside and myself should be meeting with the designer and city staff before Correct. the application is submitted to the full board? Correct, and okay. then we'll submit. Um, the I think the meeting would only be required if they had major concerns about it. If there are no major concerns, then the meeting may not be necessary. So um, depending upon your feedback, we can either schedule one or not, basically. I see. So you would like uh, the two of us to provide feedback directly to to you all at this point in time, and then you can Correct. at the termination? We can share um, that with James Horn, who's the applicant. Right. Right. If there's nothing else, our next meeting is going to be April 23rd, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do I hear a second? Are you allowed to a second? I'll call vote, please. Vice Chair Guida? Yes. Member Benvenu? Yes. Member Mather? Yes. Member Baldo? Yes. Member Bishai? Yes. Member Aguilar Medrano? 